I've got a problem with lack of coordination. I want to use my micrometer, which is quite heavy. I find it difficult to hold the part. Rats. Put it back in again. Hold the part in the right place before I can measure it. And the problem becomes even worse when I try to use a bore gauge. Trying to hold that steady while also trying to unwind the micrometer and then get it in the right place to get an accurate reading is very frustrating. So it's time to build a solution. I've got this bit of aluminium offcut that I reckon is going to work. And I want to sit it sort of like that. So if I put a bit of a cut on an angle and then a little spot for the micrometer to sit on, then that will be part of the solution. So my completely accurate and to scale drawing it's going to be something like this. And of course, every milling job starts with squaring up your stock. So, here we go. At least this job will be easy because it's almost all out of aluminium. Fortunately for my poor machining skills, this little job doesn't require any accuracy. So I'll get rid of the bulk of the material just by cutting it on the bandsaw and then I'll clean it up on the mill. As you can see, I'm just using a parallel to get the work in the right place. I want that foot to be narrower than my micrometer. Um, I've got a few manual ones as well and um, so it probably needs to be just a little bit thinner. So I'll take a bit off that face. Oh, right. The micrometer's got an angle on it but I want it to sit horizontal. So just a little bit of filing will fix that.
Yep, that'll do. Time to make the movable jaw. So I'll just use my adjustable scribe here to find out how wide the fixed jaw is. And I'll scribe a mark on this bit of scrap that I will use for the movable jaw. Right, I've cut that down to some sort of reasonable size. But of course, the movable jaw has got an angle on it. So I'm just going to roughly measure where the bend should be. So the plan is to cut a V section out of this on the bandsaw, but not all the way through. That V should allow me to bend it far enough. Alrighty then, this is an excuse to use my dead blow hammer. And I'll use the lead end. And I'm taking it slow so the aluminium won't tear. Okay, that'll do. I'll be able to trim up the top and bottom later. But first, I just want to weld that joint. With the joint welded, I can clean up the saw cut as well as the weld. And the finger sander will clean up the inside. And then a final finish off with a bit of sandpaper. The movable jaw will have the hole in the middle for the, the screw to move it in and out. But I also want a couple of guides. So I'll just, uh, that'll do. So a couple of guides on each side that will be fixed into the movable jaw and will slide in and out. Well, I may as well do the job right, so let's get the edge finder out and find the centre of this. This will allow me to take note of the DRO settings when I drill the three holes in this, so I can drill the three holes in the fixed jaw the same. I'm going to use an M6 thread for the movable jaw, but the, the movable jaw itself will just be a clearance, so it's just a 6mm hole in that. The guide posts are going to be a 6mm aluminium rod, so I'm wanting a hole that's a nice tight fit. Because the guide posts will be fixed into the movable jaw and will slide in and out of the fixed jaw.
Now to put the corresponding holes in the fixed jaw. I've done a pilot hole with a 5mm drill and now I'm just coming in with the M6 thread tap. So, this is how it should all fit together. The little pins are sort of a loose clearance in the fixed jaw and they'll be tight in the movable jaw. The pins are a tight fit in the movable jaw and a little bit of Loctite as well. We'll make sure that they stay in place. I'll need some sort of a base to mount the vise on. I've got this bit of scrap. I'm wondering whether this would do the job. It's just a bit of scrap steel. I've simply drilled a hole in the centre of it and screwed the vise down onto it. I'm adding a spring so that when the thumb screw undoes the movable jaw, the movable jaw will move out automatically. The thumb screw is made exactly the same way as my previous video where I made the adjustable scribe, so I haven't bothered showing it in this video. Anyway, it's together, so let's give it a try. Well, it looks okay, but I'm already thinking that the base is not heavy enough and it's moving around. You can see as I'm winding the micrometer it's moving around on the bench and I'm having to sort of hold it with my other hand and that's really defeating the purpose. So let's put that base aside as being a silly idea. I've got another bit of scrap. That's much heavier that I reckon will do the job. So, with just a little bit of cleaning up on the lathe and a tapped hole in the centre, Bob should be our uncle. I'm attaching the vise to the base with a piece of M6 rod and just using a bit of thread lock on both ends we'll hold it together. The keen observer will note that there's a hole in the back of that fixed jaw as well. <laughs> I drilled it in the wrong place. Oh well. Always at least one mistake with every job I do. Right, let's give this one a test drive. Now that's nice and heavy. That should be good. I'm pleased that only a tiny bit of pressure from the thumb screw holds it very securely. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. That works fine. So the last thing to do is just to check that my manual micrometers will fit happily as well. And of course they fit absolutely fine. No problem at all. That was a very easy build. I don't know why I didn't do that ages ago. I think we can call this another success. 
another handy tool to add to the growing collection in the shed. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.